Here is part two in our video, 625 square foot home, two bedroom. And in this video, we're going to be going over the roof trusses and the backing, roof sheathing, and fascia board. And since it is a straight gable roof, it's not going to be that difficult to build. And I would imagine installing the trusses probably shouldn't take more than a day, maybe eight hours. But that doesn't mean you can't do it faster or that it won't take a little longer. Let's go ahead and take a look at where the trusses are positioned. The trusses are laid out in this video so that we can start with an eight foot piece of roof sheathing from the fascia board and then go this way with our layout. And then, of course, we would start with a four footer over here and you'll get a better idea of what that's going to look like after the roof sheathing has been installed. So here we have our lookouts that are usually going to be two by fours, 32 inches on center. And of course you could always space them 24 inches on center so that they line up with the plywood or roof sheathing breaks. And you'll get a better idea what I'm talking about again towards the end of the video. And we are going to be using a plum cut for our fascia board. You can always use a square cut if that's going to be easier. And we are going to have some roof spacing support boards like these right here to make sure that everything lines up 24 inches on center. The roof trusses are 24 inches on center in this video. And we will have an access opening into the attic. And it looks like there's plenty of room for an attic heating and air conditioning unit. And if there's enough interest in this video, I will go ahead and install a forced air heating unit to give you an idea of what it would look like in this home. Next up, let's take a look at the bracing for the roof trusses. And even though I don't have the bracing going all the way down to the top of the wall framing, you can always make that work. I just didn't do it in this video, just to give you another example. And the reason why I didn't do it, of course, right here, and maybe you can get a better view of it over here, the center of the roof trusses line up with the wall framing. But that doesn't mean you can't put a block in here and run that all the way down. And in this video, I did not leave a space between the bottom of the roof truss and the top of the wall framing because I've gotten a lot of complaints from people who say you don't need to do it. And of course, that would be a question that your roof truss manufacturer could easily answer for you. And if you do need a gap, you might need to install a 1x4 instead of a 2x4 top plate on all of the walls that the roof trusses will be crossing over. And of course, our access opening there again, and then our backing. And this backing will provide us with a way to attach the drywall to the section over here where the roof trusses aren't going to be. Another common method for this type of assembly. Let's go ahead and remove the roof trusses, give you a better idea of what we're looking at. And we're using two by fours here. And for those of you wondering why we don't have a piece of backing here, that should make a little more sense when we zoom in here and you figure out that we're going to be using the roof truss for the backing. And yes, every once in a while, the roof trusses line up perfectly or at the very least close enough. Now, I didn't put any type of building hardware in here because if you're going to use this method right here, I don't see why you just can't toenail the roof trusses directly into the top plates. However, I have seen plenty of people use framing hardware like truss clips here, even though there's no gap in between the bottom of the roof truss and the top of the wall framing plate. If there is a gap, then you might consider using the building hardware. Don't forget that the bottom of the roof trusses might not be perfectly flat. They might have a little arc in them. And then that arc is meant to be taken out once the roof is loaded or the roofing materials have been installed. Next up, let's go ahead and take a look at the bottom here of the ceiling. That'd be the ceiling in the living room. Let's go ahead and put our fascia board on. And again, since this is a straight gable roof, installing the fascia board shouldn't be that difficult. It's going to be a little more difficult sometimes when you have a little more chopped up roof. And I do have examples of that at our website if you want to take a look at those in the home building project area. So that would be the home building tab. Click on the tab at the top. And I believe on that page you should find a variety of different home building projects for those of you who are interested in that. Next up, let's go ahead and install our roof sheathing. 
we're going to be using half inch OSB and you can always use thicker roof sheathing along with a view of the outlookers here and an example of the outlookers not lining up with the roof sheathing. So for example, if I was to move these over a little bit, I could cover up the breaks here in the plywood and you wouldn't know what I was using up here. You wouldn't have any breaks. And you might be able to do that by spacing the outlookers at 24 inches on center to solve that problem there. Take a look at the top where the fascia board will connect to the ridge block. And the last thing I want to point out in the video is the roof sheathing. How I spaced the roof trusses so that an 8 foot piece of roof sheathing would break on the center of this roof truss. And a 4 foot piece right here would break on the center of this roof truss. And sometimes you might need to mess around a little bit with the roof truss layout to see what's going to be the best for your project. But since I already did that for you, I think we can go ahead and accept this as a pretty good layout design for this particular roof. Now, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment area and I will try to answer them as soon as possible. And thanks for watching. Don't forget to check out some of our other videos on YouTube. And if you can't find the videos on YouTube, make sure that you visit our website to find a complete organized list of all of the videos we've made so far.